We each are presenting on fighting the world's fight. When I left Oxford 44 years ago, the world's fight was to end the Vietnam War. There was no concern with corruption. Corruption, the abuse of public power for private purposes, became an issue 15 years later when Peter Eigen founded Transparency International. And then it became the world's fight in 2003 when the United Nations Convention Against Corruption was established to bring all nations together to fight against this particular scourge. On the non-governmental level, just a few days ago, the World Council of Churches, which brings together 110 different uh, nations, the 500 million Christians, declared October 14 to 20 a call to action against corruption, seeking to get a million signatures on a petition for integrity, acknowledging the serious nature of the corruption problem on a global <coughs> basis. And earlier this year, the Global Corruption Barometer surveyed uh, 114,000 people in 107 countries, and the vast majority agreed that corruption was a most serious problem. So what was a minimal concern before has now become the world's fight. Why and how has this been the case? Again, the Global Corruption Barometer tells us why. The majority in all countries believe that public authority has become subject to private power. And that even in democracies where it is supposed to be by the people and for the people, corporate power subverts the power of the electorate. Indeed, you may recall that it was five years and five days ago that Lehman Brothers, holding over $600 billion in assets, filed for bankruptcy triggering the global financial and economic crisis. That global <coughs> financial and economic crisis, as you know, led to hundreds of thousands of people, mainly young people, losing jobs, hundreds of thousands of people losing their homes, pensions being degraded, and the value of personal wealth being in decline. Yet, five years and five days after, not one, of the CEOs, the accountants, and the senior auditors, who it is now established behaved improperly in an inappropriate and sometimes corrupt ways. Not one has been prosecuted. Not one has been incarcerated. Not one has been punished for their crimes. And therefore, the people are saying that we need to do something about this. Consequences of corruption, of course, go well beyond and before the global financial crisis. The World Bank estimates that one trillion dollars is paid each year in bribes for the private sector to get public contracts around the world. So that when bridges are built by contractors who are not qualified and experienced enough, they collapse before the time. The aid and grants to persons and to individuals and to causes around the world, whether from the World Bank or the Inter-American Development Bank, it is estimated that 20 to 40 percent of all aid, whether to combat AIDS or deal with disease, whatever, goes into the pockets of the corrupt. But that is grand corruption at the big level. A major issue is what is called small corruption where it is estimated that one out of every four people around the world pay bribes to the police, judges, and other public authorities. And this is a major issue. How does one deal with small corruption at the same time as tackling grand corruption? Moreover, the levels of corruption undermine trust and confidence in democratic institutions. So that survey after survey it demonstrates that it is the political parties, the parliaments, the legislature, the judiciary, and the police in whom the people have least confidence in democratic uh, societies. As far apart 
as Jamaica, the United States, United Kingdom, political party is the least trusted. Yet that is the body that exercises uh, public authority. So we and the world's people, we have a fight in our hands to deal first of all with our own temptation to be corrupt. Because very often the ability to get a house or a license depends on our willingness and on our ability to pay a bribe. We have to strengthen the laws and to build institutions to punish the corrupt, to show that corruption does not pay. Because if you are teaching the youngsters, honesty is the best policy, and they see with their own kind of eyes that the corruption does pay, then the teaching of ethics really falls on their fears. We have to build people's movements for integrity. It was Bob Marley who actually said in one of his lyrics, the greatness of a man is not in how much wealth he acquires, but in his integrity and his ability to affect those around him positively. Well, on a global scale, we can say that that fight is making progress. Transparency International now has 100 chapters around the world, including in Jamaica. We established National Integrity Action, of which I'm the Executive Director, in 2011. Our main purpose in fighting the world's fight in our homeland is first of all to build awareness, to build awareness of the need to practice integrity and to understand the linkages between why the roads are not properly fixed, the clinics are not appropriately stopped, people are not getting jobs in the way that they should because investment has to pay a transaction tax of 20% in order to come into our country and in other countries. We have to build an awareness of that. We're putting together networks, networks of professionals, journalists, accountants, church leaders, associations of youth and students, partnerships to fight the fight in our country. Of course, it's important as well to strengthen the will and the capacity of the professionals, the judges, the prosecutors, the investigators, because where political weak will is weak, professional will has to substitute in some measure. We have to advocate the passage of critical legislation, most of all campaign finance, because almost in every country, powerful interests pay big money to fund campaigns, and of course come knocking on the doors of the ministers and the cabinet secretaries afterwards, saying, remember me, I need to have some special favors, whether it's in terms of tax waivers or other benefits. In fighting the world's fight, we don't expect to win overnight. It's a tough struggle because the corrupt are deeply entrenched in many systems where corruption is endemic. But we are beginning to see results. In Jamaica, the bribery is now down to 12%. The global average is 27%. We're seeing that people are understanding that it's important to practice integrity. Scores of police officers have now been dismissed for corruption, separated from the Jamaica Constabulary Force. One out of every three Jamaicans now knows of national integrity action after two years, and 77% of the people say they want to get involved in the fight against corruption. That's 25% above the global average. Our current challenge is to develop and strengthen the means to ensure that people can get involved, and in that, we're deeply encouraged by experiences elsewhere by the people in Brazil, where you would know hundreds of thousands have gotten involved in strengthening national anti-corruption legislation. Prior to 2010, 1.3 million electors in Brazil signed in support of the clean record law. The people in India give us great inspiration. Their marches and representation have produced a strengthening of India's anti-corruption institutions. And of course, in many countries and instances, Impunity is being challenged. The rule of law is being upheld in bringing justice to former ministers and presidents and high officials in countries as far apart as Greece and Germany, Guatemala, China and Mexico. So the world's fight against corruption is essential, it is tough, but it is making progress in bringing integrity and trust as principles of public institutions, but also of interpersonal relations. One of the main challenges we face, how to get people to behave with integrity and honesty when they see that in high places, it is corruption 
that pays. We have to keep the fight up to enforce the rule of law, to hold the corrupt to account, to clean up democratic processes, and of course to empower the people, because it is only through that means, the empowering of the people, that we are going to restore public authority as an authority for the people and not an authority for private interests. Thank you very much.